Hi, this is Luke from MGN, and today we're gonna to look at Control. What is Control? It is a third-person shooter, um, sort of ability thrower, very akin to something like Mass Effect. If you've played an adept in Mass Effect, Control is gonna feel very familiar. So, we're gonna go through Control from every aspect today, so that you can decide whether it's worth your time and money. So if you're looking for a really comprehensive Control review, stick with me, we're gonna give you one right now. Okay, so like I mentioned in the intro, Control is a supernatural third-person shooter uh, ability wielder game wherein the player takes control of Jesse Faden as she explores the mystery behind her past within the Federal Bureau of Control. That's where the name comes from. As the player explores the building, various supernatural phenomena will occur and Jesse, you and Jesse, the player, will have to fight their way through Bureau members under the control of the malevolent influence of the Hiss. As the game progresses, the player will encounter items of significance that put Jessie through a trial, and with the trial complete, she will unlock more of her supernatural powers, such as uh, telekinesis and dashing in flight. There are more role-playing elements throughout the game in the form of unlocks also. Jessie will be able to level up her powers, augment them with different traits, and even alter the form in which her gun takes. Change the shape of your weapon to suit your needs, augment it, and your abilities with passive power-ups. It's pretty cool. Control released late last year to huge success and critical acclaim and was ported earlier this year to the latest next-gen consoles. And it is brought to the world by its developer, Remedy Entertainment, and its publisher, 505 Games. So does Control live up to the hype and is it worth the investment of both your time and money? Well stick with me as we go through, through MGN's impressions of Control and then you'll know. Our MGN impressions have evolved, and today we're going to dissect control from a variety of angles. We'll give you each angle and a score out of 10, then give you our final verdict based on those. We're going to score control on 1. Difficulty. How does the control, how does control scale on the difficulty meter? Is it challenging enough to maintain your interest through an entire playthrough, or is it too easy, making the game boring, or too difficult, making it inaccessible? And then number 2 is appearance. Does control look good? How are the graphics? Is it demanding on the GPU? Or can your computer actually run the game and have it look half decent? We'll see. Three is sound. Is there voice acting? If so, how is the voice acting? If not, why not? How the sound effects, the gunshots and abilities Jesse can pull off hit the ear right? Then how's the soundtrack? Does it work thematically with the game or against it? Or is it simply there with no real impact? Four is story. Control boasts about being an epic storytelling experience. So is it? If it is, is that story woven into the seamless? Is it woven in seamlessly to the gameplay, or does one tread on the toes of the other? Five is fun. Sometimes games that focus heavily on a story forget they're supposed to be fun as well. Is control closer to a visual novel than something you can sit down and actively play, or is the story an aid to the gameplay without being jarring to your fun? Can you simply sit down for a short amount of time and play control for fun? Sixth and the last point is price. How does the amount of time and the amount of enjoyment that you can get out of control compare to how much money you have to spend on it? Is the time enjoyment in proportion to the game? Or is it a full sword? Is it overpriced? We'll get there when we get the price. All right, we're gonna start with difficulty. Control is not a challenging game. Often combat boils down to simply hiding behind cover, waiting for the enemy to stop shooting you, then shooting them back. Yeah, there's some variety in the enemies that you'll face. Some will rush you, some will have their own abilities, some will explode, but there's never really much of a challenge. Jesse's pretty well equipped from the get-go, and you get abilities quite quickly as you progress through the game. The issue is that the game doesn't really get any more challenging from the start. In fact, it's quite the opposite. The game's enemies wouldn't be a challenge with the base kit that Jesse begins with at the start of the game, but you just keep getting stronger and stronger and the enemies don't really get more challenging to accommodate this. Like I said, the game does throw different ones at you, but they're just that. Different. Not really stronger or more complex or with better AI, it's different. So you never really feel like you're challenged. Jessie might proclaim that she feels like the two of you are in danger, but it never actually feels that way. Especially with the boss fights, they boil down to much the same formula as the regular enemies, just with longer health bars and maybe a flashy attack thrown in every now and then. Stick to cover, Wait, shoot, yeah. This lack of difficulty and challenge actively works against the narrative. It's hard to build suspense and fear with the horror subgenre if there are no challenging enemies or elements to your game. It just makes them feel kind of comical instead. The game tries to instill fear, 
Then you defeat whatever ghosty it is with pretty extreme ease. It's laughable, and that kind of humor is death to fear. That's pretty disappointing. Makes the suspense and sort of horror elements that Control has kind of fall flat. So difficulty, that's a 4 out of 10. Next is appearance. Control can look extremely good if you have a beefy graphics card to handle how demanding the game is. We played the game on the highest settings with a moderately good computer, and there are still portions that drop the, the, uh, the frames per second. Not dramatically enough to make the game unplayable, but enough to be noticed. So, the game can look good, but isn't optimized well for general audience machines. Whilst control can be the bragging point and sort of showcase for ray tracing, that really shouldn't be a selling point for you or I. A better focus on optimizing the game, rather than being a showpiece to sell graphics card, would have made for a much more enjoyable experience, as as far as PC is concerned. On console, especially if you're not playing the enhanced version on the next gen, you'll notice some severe stuttering and graphical issues. During the game's more sort of graphic intensive sections of the game, the poor optimization shines through and will cause jarring stutters and heavy frame drops. Between this and the long load times on console and the jar jarring sort of texture loading, so they feel very random and <laughs> awkward and obvious, I can't really recommend playing Control on anything but the highest end console if you can get your hands on one of the new ones. If you think about picking up Control on the last gen hardware and trying your luck, uh, I wouldn't bother. So that's appearance and I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Next is sound. Courtney Hope knocks her voice acting performance out of the park. In fact, the entire game is casted quite well and the performances of those chosen cannot be faulted. So, Control gets a huge check mark for both the casting of the voice actors and then their performance. But as far as that category goes, Courtney really does deserve some recognition over and above that of her peers for her performance as Jesse Faden. She brings the character to life, and once you play the game, it will be quickly become apparent that it couldn't have been anyone else as the voice behind the protagonist. What does that leave? Sound effects and soundtrack. As far as sound effects, the weapons feel okay. The shots of your main weapon sound as they should, the shotgun weapon type feels impactful, the more accurate weapons hit the ear just as well. My issue with the sound effects is the abilities that Jesse can perform. They just don't sound as cool as they look, and they should. Telekinetically ripping rubble from the wall so you can force push it into an enemy's face is a really badass moment inside the game, but the ability sound effects are almost non-existent and it doesn't make you feel anything. Don't get me wrong, the ability makes you feel badass, but the lack of an impactful sound effect signaling your various paranormal powers makes the game feel a little dead. Perhaps this quietest to enhance the suspense or the horror feel they're trying to go for, it just kind of falls flat instead. I just leave soundtrack. It's no secret that I'm a sucker for a great video game soundtrack, and that's what Controls tries to be, it tries to be dark and edgy and have you sitting on the edge of your seat. The thing is though, it just kind of doesn't, it feels kind of generic. There's not much there to make it feel unique, it feels like if you just google horror game soundtrack, just copy the gist of whatever the results are, then that's what you get from Control's musical score. And often it doesn't really match the game, like I mentioned earlier, with the difficulty, you never really feel tense, and then the music score tries to enforce it, but it just doesn't come. So I'm just going to give sound a 6 out of 10. Great voice acting, but everything else is kind of eh. Next is story. Control is first and foremost a storytelling experience. Strip away every other aspect of the game, Control was made to tell an interesting and compelling story. And it does, it hits the mark in that aspect. The beginning of the game, the exposition aided by Jesse, Courtney Hope, draws you instantaneously and will make you forgive many of the game's flaws in the vein of seeing Jesse's story through. So kudos to the writing team for the nous and execution on that point. But does that initial cutscene draw carry you through to the rest of the game, and is it backed up by good storytelling throughout? Yes. The point I will chiefly make about Control's story is that the more you know, the more you want to know. You fed breadcrumbs to the story, to the game's overarching story throughout, and each breadcrumb makes you starving for the next. It carries the game throughout the entirety of your playthrough. It's not predictable, and it's not something you can really compare to other experiences. It's it's unique, and that's something that's really rare nowadays. I will say that if you're playing Control simply because you've seen the action sequences, that you might be a little, a little disappointed with how often those are held up by the lore, but I would say to hold on to your disappointment 
and see the experience through even if you're an action junkie. The experience that you're left with towards the end of your control playthrough will change your opinion on the frequent storytelling pit stops. It's that good. As for story, I'm going to give it 9 out of 10. The next is fun. Like I mentioned earlier, sometimes the fun that can be found in control, that is throwing enemies around and shooting up the place, can be halted in order to maintain the storytelling experience. At first this can be a little jarring. Why? Because as you begin unlocking new and cooler abilities, you can get a little frustrated that there isn't an opportunity to spam them at enemies until you've sat through a bit of exposition. Why don't I have a problem with this? Because the storytelling is of the highest order and the action sequences do come if you're patient. Those sequences of fun aren't particularly challenging, but they are satisfying. Sure, it's not going to make you make a boss fight several times and learn the ins and outs of combat surrounding that fight. There's just not that need. But what I will say is this, not everything needs to be a challenge. Sometimes at the end of the day, it's nice to just come home, turn on the computer, and feel like a goddess. Jessie is that, she's overpowered, therein lies the fun. Smashing enemies in the face with a fire extinguisher, throwing with your awe-inspiring mind powers, that's fun every single time. She's a goddess. The more overpowered you become, the more fun you have. There's no challenge, sure, but there is enjoyment found in the slaughter and that makes Control a fun game. I said earlier when we visited the difficulty of Control that the lack of a punishing game makes the theme seem comical and can ruin the tense and suspenseful aspects of the game. And that is true, but if you accept that and just indulge in being a super powered bad guy melter and don't try and force Control to be a scary movie experience, then there's honestly a lot of fun that you can have with the combat mechanics. Whatever misgivings I have about the challenge are moot when I can mind bend a piece of the floor into an unsuspecting enemy's face. Strip everything else away and that is fun a hundred times out of a hundred. Fun gets a nine out of 10. The last point we're going to look at is price. The ultimate edition for Control is currently $59.95 AUD on the Steam store. Does that mean you get value for money? Is that price in proportion to how much game time you can get out of Control and how enjoyable that game time is? Well, considering that I, play, I paid that price and I've had my time with Control, I can say that it feels a little bit overpriced. Depending on whether you take your time to explore every avenue or not, you'll get roughly 13 hours out of the game. More or less, depending on how much of a completionist you are, don't get me wrong, it's a great experience and the story is something that will stick with you, that's just not enough for me. The gameplay feels good and it can be a lot of fun to screw around with, it just all wraps up quite suddenly, it felt to me anyway. I was a little surprised when I reached the end of the control gameplay tether. As such, I'm going to recommend that you pick it up, but wait for a sale for sure. Price, I'm going to go with 6 out of 10. So where does that leave us for an overall final verdict? MGN is going to give Control 7 out of 10. And that's going to wrap things up for our impressions of Control. I hope you enjoyed our coverage, and if you agree or disagree with any of the points we've made, we'd love to hear from you on our MGN.GG blog and the YouTube channel. Be sure to keep an eye out for both the news, reviews, updates on all the things you love, on all the games you love. Thanks for listening.